talk about specialized cells. Previously we looked at cells, we looked at their content, we looked at um, the plant cells and the animal cells, they generalized. But in our bodies there, there's, we have a lot of cells, trillions of them, but their, their shapes, their contents slightly change to enable them to carry out special, unique functions, particular functions and so as to enable us to be the human beings that we are. For example, you have cells that enable you to see, like you're seeing this video, and well, they can't help you, those ones cannot help you to test, and the ones that can help you to test cannot help you to move. So, we say that the ones in the eye are specialized for seeing, the ones in my tongue are specialized for testing. The ones in my muscle are specialized to enable me to move. Therefore, by definition, specialized cells are cells that perform a unique function within the body. By the term modified, we mean that this cell has a few changes to it to enable it to perform that function as we are going to see on like an example. A person who specializes in carrying things in their head, they should have their neck maybe slightly stronger than mine. A person that specializes whose job is a wrestler, I guess they would have more muscles than mine. I guess than used to. A person who specializes in in sync in in maybe repairing watches probably has a keener eye to see those very small elements of the watch than maybe mine. Okay, so the same applies to the cells, only that theirs is a bit more sophisticated. Now let us start looking at examples of specialized cells within bodies of animals. The function they do and the changes, the few, the, the thing about them that enables them to carry out that function. And let's start with the red blood cell. The red blood cell is found in blood. And the function of the red blood cell is to transport oxygen throughout the body. Remember we say that organisms respire and in animals like you and I and fish, they have red blood cells that transport the oxygen which is required for respiration. So. transport oxygen in the body and they, they carry out this, func this function efficiently because they lack him they lack the nucleus remember we said the nucleus carries out the functions of uh, regulates the functions of the cell well the red blood cell does not have it so it lacks Now, the lack of a nucleus allows for space because the nucleus is quite large. So it allows for more space so that more oxygen can be carried. And the, the space for nucleus is occupied by a pigment known as hemoglobin. Now, hemoglobin is the pigment that 
combines with oxygen so that it is carried. Okay, that is why our blood is red. If you remove red blood cells from the blood, well, you remain with the milky part of the blood and the water part of the blood. So, that is the red blood cell. They are disc shaped. They're simply like that. Well, they're more like donuts. They are, they are disc, if you can think of a disc, like this. They are disc shaped, but they do not have a hole through. Now, that disc shaped nature enables them to move very well within the body. Okay? Like that. That is about the red blood cell. defends our body against disease causing germs in other words it protects us from um, disease and infection that is why they say someone's immunity is too low someone's immunity has been compromised they are dealing with white blood cell and so it has its shape is not it's not you know it's not regular it has a nucleus though, and it has very many granules inside it. Now, this irregular shape enables it to engulf the disease-causing germs. So, it defends our body by literally eating our enemy. The time when it is overwhelmed is when you start to get symptoms of disease, like symptoms of COVID-19, or symptoms of AIDS, or symptoms of malaria. So, it has Okay, so the next cell that we're going to look at is the next specialist cell that we're going to look at is the ovum or the egg cell. This one is found within bodies of females. Within bodies of female organisms like myself. And um, well, of course, they are they are hermaphrodites that have eggs and sperms too. And in human beings, they are found within ovaries. Now, this 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 cell is round and it has a nucleus and it has it has a lot of yolk around it. So this one fuses with the sperm cell from zygote. Now it has your the yolk is not as much as that of a bud it has some yolk around it which nourishes it okay and it has very thick cytoplasm important thing is that it is the female reproductive cell the next cell that we're going to look at is the ciliated cell now this cell is quite block in, in shape and it has hair like projections around it and these are the ones that refer to as cilia. Ciliated cells are located 
in the different parts of our body, for example, in the respiratory tract, okay, in the air passage. to beat in a certain direction so as to cause movement okay. now they're found within our 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 air passage okay and this uh, this 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 cilia beat mucus because we have mucus along our air passage to trap dust bacteria any viruses or any particles that can come along with air since our lungs are very delicate so we protect the lungs by beating the mucus traps the, the those particles upward towards the mouth and after when it reaches the end of the mouth it's swallowed okay so when you get the urge to cough so that you cause the the, the 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 mucus to go by force upward maybe if it's a very big infection so of course the adaptation is that it possesses mucus oh, sorry cilia that beat the mucus and the last cell that we're going to look at in animals is what we call the nerve cell. Now, if you've had anyone that is, um, that, that is a neurologist or a neurosurgeon or you want to do that as you go on, you interest yourself in the nerve cells. And the nerve cells are what makes up our brain and they, they, they pass through all our bodies. They, they enable us to sense the changes in the environment. The nerve cells enable you to know, oh, this food is too salty. Oh, this is too sweet. Nerve cells, okay? So, So it enables us, enables us to, to know the changes in our environment by transporting electrical impulses around the brain. That's why one time, sometimes accidentally, you can put your you can put your elbow maybe on a table, and suddenly you feel a shock. Probably you've touched one of the nerve cells. And it looks like this.
the, 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 the circle with lines in it in, in all, all through shows the nucleus and all these extensions they enable it to get as much information from maybe the surrounding to enable it better do its function of transmitting electrical impulses. As we see, it is also elongated. Now that enables it to transport the impulses longer. So that's why you can cut yourself or hit your foot and you feel, you feel the pains because those nerves have transported the pain reception to the brain and you say, ow, ow, ow. But if they are dead, even if you hit your toe, you won't feel the pain because well, they can't function. So they have they have extensions to connect with other with other neurons. Okay? So that you know one 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 neuron in your foot, you know, senses the pain when the pain pricks you, sends it to an next one, to an next nerve, to the next nerve like that, until it reaches your your brain and then you know or your spinal cord and then you know, ah, I think I think I've stepped on a hot on a hot something. So those are the, some of the specialized cells we have, but of course there are many others. For example, there are muscle cells that enable us to, that enable us to move. Okay. The beef that we see is the other muscle cells and they enable our bones to move so that, you know, otherwise skeletons, real skeletons cannot move because they don't have muscle cells.